morning started out so bad I got an uber driver that got lost and he was playing the most horrible music this is my first year of project water survival I've come several years for project winter survival in fact that's there was a kickoff of this wall many years ago see this mural behind me it's how I first connected with this wonderful event and these amazing people. A kid several years ago watched all invisible people videos and then he went and painted this mural out of his favorite ones and that's all thanks to Constable Scott Mills, Officer Scott Mills, how we'd say it in the States, was a Toronto police officer who used to take gang kids and find businesses and then they would use their wall to uh, have the art. I tried as a cop to engage graffiti art community in positive community, community building endeavors and I got really, really inspired by Mark Horvath at InvisiblePeople.tv uh, who at the time was down in Los Angeles because he was telling the story of people experiencing homelessness. And uh, I showed this to Kedre Brown. Uh, he's a graffiti artist. He's known as Bub's Art. Um, and he went and watched every single one of Mark's videos. And he decided to paint along with his friend uh, Jesse Pacho, who's known as Art of Fame. They decided to paint some of the faces that really inspired them of real people experiencing homelessness. And uh, it's, it's really exciting for me that the work here where this particular mural is, is the home base for Project Winter Survival and Project Water, which actually provide 3,000 winter survival kits and summer survival kits for people experiencing homelessness. Uh, annually and today is Project Water 2017. what Jody does and what Engage and Change stands for is they don't go out and give these kids, we do a little bit, but these kids go to service providers. I mean, so often outreach is being cut, they can't even afford water. So by putting these kids together and then giving them to local service providers that are going out, connecting to homeless people, building relationships with the goal of ending homelessness and hopefully getting them into housing. That's why I support this event.
love about this event is how Toronto Police is really integrated at every level, right from social media to building the kits. Truly amazing. Hey everybody, this is Scott. <laughs> Hi everybody. Uh, Scott, uh -huh. besides being a Toronto Police Officer, is, in my opinion, the very best social media event person. <laughs> I've ever met and he's running social media for the event. Ta -da! <laughs> I'm not really running. It's a teamwork here, but um, essentially what I'm trying to do is we have a, a, a lot of uh, followers on our Toronto Police social media and I'm trying to take the uh, great content being produced here by volunteers and community members um, for Engage and Change project. Um, project Water that's getting 3,000 uh, uh, survival kits to people experiencing homelessness throughout the entire Greater Toronto Area by delivering them, by packing them here at this warehouse and delivering them to uh, social service agencies that can give them to their regular people that they meet on the street. And I think this is just a very worthwhile cause and uh, I, I, there's a whole team of people that are that are kind of working here today and we're just talking back and forth to each other and trying to get the word out to donate so what's your number one tip or give two or three if you want <laughs> about Social media at events. The social media events, the number one thing is you need a good back end. Uh, you, you need uh, good communication back and forth and you need to assign roles and uh, basically have people excited to do those roles. And if you can, uh, if you can accomplish that, then the day of, uh, you can really uh, capture the moment, capture people doing great things and uh, tell the world about it and hopefully the world will get as inspired as the people that are here at the event. People want to take action. People want to do something. But charity never solved a social crisis. So I've always said, it's okay to feed somebody in a park as long as you're doing something to get them out of the park. It's so great that Engage and Change and Project Water Survival, they give the kits to service providers who are working to get people out of homelessness. Everybody's working hard this year, Jody. Thanks to wonderful supporters, the survival kit doubled twice. The stuff inside, all good stuff. Hats, sunglasses, sunscreen, and of course, water. I love most of what I do is a sense of community. And Engage and Change and Project Water envelops just that. It's about bringing people together for an incredible cause, a horrible cause, but a cause that has to be paid attention to because the stat out there of having people homeless, not just in the winter, but in the heat of the summer, especially here in Ontario, was incredible. Does anybody know what the stat is of how many people? Did you know that it's more likely to pass away and die of dehydration and being homeless than it is to freeze in the winter? Now think of how hot it is here today, how sweaty we are here today. We've got tons of water thanks to Nestle, but imagine if we did this today without any water. How would you feel? Now take that and throw in the fact that you don't have a home, you have nowhere to go, you've got no shelter, you've got no regular income coming in, you've got no food. That's why you're here today. And that's why this is such an incredible cause. So you know what, I want to give a big round of applause to Jody and her entire team because you know what, she does an incredible job, 18 years of doing this. That is incredible. You know what, it's thanks to people like you and of course our sponsors That's and all right the people that donate product and time and all that kind of stuff. So thank you very much. Terry and his entire team are from Nestle Waters and they've been involved for, we're just going to say several years because I think we've lost count. I think it's actually more than 10, but that's okay. Today though, I have the honor and privilege to meet a man who's changed my life, Mark Horvath. Uh, Mark Horvath will tell you a little bit about himself, but when I met him, he was in LA. Uh, we met in a conference we spoke at together in New York City, uh, Twitter, what was it called? 
140 conference. The 140 conference. I did not know how to tweet, uh, but I was asked to speak at the conference about this kind of stuff that we're doing. Um, Mark has an incredible organization called Invisible People. He will tell you more, but he would be, if there had to be kind of a president or an expert in homelessness in North America or even globally, Mark is the guy and he's come up from the United States to be here with us and we're going out doing outreach with media this afternoon. So Mark? Thank you. So um, I was homeless for seven years. And then I um, rebuilt my life back to a three-bedroom house and the economy tanked and I lost everything again. And I grabbed the camera and started empowering homeless people to share their own stories. Since then, it's been about 300 cities, eight different countries. Uh, I was really honored that your government had me travel to 24 cities in Canada a few years back. But as I travel and I meet people on the street you know i love seeing faces i recognize but i hate that they're still there so i have to tell you about jennifer because i ran into jennifer last night so i first met jennifer after project winter survival three years ago and i interviewed her and posted her video um she's in a wheelchair she's sleeping outside this will be her this last winter was her fifth winter sleeping outside in a wheelchair so i ran into her last summer and she did, just wasn't in the mood to tell her story. I don't blame her. And uh, yesterday she did. So the video is up on Invisible People. But my point in all that is, is you guys really deserve a round of applause for coming here today and helping. It's so greatly important. But you cannot let this conversation, this cause, this momentum stop here. You all have a voice and whether it's with your church or your synagogue or your co-workers or wherever you need to be talking about this because collectively you can influence policy change and there's never been a more urgent need to end homelessness in canada than there is right now and that is up to you today was fun today is great today has huge impact but you need to keep that momentum going and we need to get these people off the streets into homes. So now it's my favorite part, the kits all made, nonprofit charity service providers are pulling up trucks and picking up kits and water. But Jody and I and a bunch of people are gonna go downtown and hand out a few kits ourselves. <laughs> What do you do? So I'm Alana, I'm a registered nurse at Street Health, and Street Health is a community agency in downtown Toronto, Dundas and Sherburne, and we serve clients or individuals who are homeless, marginally housed, precariously housed, and our clients have complex needs, whether it's mental health and addictions, whether it's just not being able to make ends meet, they've been out and down on their luck for a while. We try to provide them with as much health care as we can, community services or access to community services, support workers primary care and advocacy and also the outreach which is part of our primary care so tell me about project water and why this is important so water is important water and the survival kits are important for our clients especially during the summer months so during the winter months it's easy for people to sort of have an image of what homeless people might be experiencing and how difficult it is for them but the summer plays an ex a, a, a larger role in debilitating our clients who are already living challenging difficult lives when you don't have access to water, cool water, or shelter, when you're forced to continually be on the march, on the go, trying to find somewhere where you can rest for a few minutes, having access to cool water or supplies, whether it's a cup, whether it's a towel, a washcloth, can be really important to a lot of people who have nothing at all. Thanks everybody for joining us today. 
It was wonderful. Jody, thank you for bringing me in. Thank, thank you as always for visiting and spending the day with us, Mark. It's, right. it's a, hopefully there will be no homelessness and we can just hang out. That would be great. If you would like to know more about Engage and Change, there will be a link in the description. Please donate, possibly bring Jody in, teach your organization how you can do charity, but charity that has real impact in ending homelessness. And also if you're a business and you want to figure out how to do something like this, my slogan is giving back makes great business sense and I'm happy to talk to you about that too. Yep. And so like this video, click subscribe. Like this video, click like this video, click subscribe. Support us on Patreon. And until next time, see ya. Bye bye.